uh, they are shutting down his account. Now, obviously, Twitter has come under a great deal of scrutiny, uh, a lot of pressure from uh, social media uh, safety advocates uh, in recent weeks uh, saying that the social media platform hasn't gone far enough. Uh, in recent days, we saw they took down some of the president's tweets. Uh, and prior to that, they had been labeling uh, the president's tweets in the run up uh, to January 6th, uh, pointing out when he would say false things about the election results and so on. Uh, but this is a dramatic development, Wolf, no question about it. Uh, suspending permanently, the uh, social media platform says, uh, the president's Twitter account. Now, one has to wonder, Wolf, what this will do to the president's state of mind. We know he's been unstable. Trump, We're hearing from our you're in checkmate now. And so on in recent days. What does this do to the president now that he, he no longer has access to this Twitter account, which he uh, talks about all the time as a way of going around the media and so on? He doesn't have that anymore, at least not for the time being. And it makes it makes you wonder, covering this president, knowing how unstable things have been in recent days, uh, whether or not this uh, pushes the president further to the edge uh, as impeachment is being contemplated. Trump, you better resign right now. And so on. Uh, he can't vent on Twitter. One of the things we've noticed uh, over the weekends uh, covering this president. Uh, he, he won't be you know, doing the work of the American people. He'll be uh, tweeting his grievances and so on. He can't do that, it seems, this weekend uh, during a critical time, the uh, end days of his presidency. Will. Yeah, I just went uh, on my phone uh, to his Twitter account uh, and I saw, the only thing you see over there, it says uh, he was following 51 individuals, uh, but he had 88.7 million Followers, 88.7 million followers, accounts suspended, right. Twitter suspends accounts that violate the Twitter rules. Uh, this, he, you know, he's always boasting how many millions of people get his information on social media. Yeah, yeah, Facebook yeah. suspended him, Instagram suspended him, now Twitter has suspended him. Uh, this is going to cause him deep, deep, not only frustration, but anger, and I assume he's going to try to retaliate. I assume he'll, he'll try to retaliate, and we, we are expecting this evening some kind of video message from the president. Now, you know, we also have to wonder whether or not that video message uh, is something that Twitter did not want to put up on the platform. Uh, perhaps that's not the case. We're going to have to wait and see what that video message is. But uh, these recent video messages that the president has put out there uh, after January 6th, he's tweeted them out. Uh, he can't do that this evening. And so presumably, if the White House wants to get that video message from the president out to the American people this evening, one that we're expecting this evening, they're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. They're going to have to e email it to the White House press. They're at least favorite people in the world in order for us to get it out to the rest of the world. So the Woo! he has been kneecapped by Twitter. He can no longer use this account to do all of the uh, various and sundry things that he does on a regular basis. Uh, he is, uh, for all intents and purposes, He's done banned at the moment from this very powerful social media platform. Well, and banned from uh, sen sending out anything. Banned Trump for the world. Followers. Brian Stelter, our chief media correspondent, is with us as well. Uh, so, uh, Brian, give us a little perspective on what is going on right now. Twelve days to go in the presidency, and Twitter permanently suspends it. This is a moment in Silicon Valley history, as well as a moment in political history. And this has significance all around the world, Wolf. So many world leaders use Twitter to communicate. But this is a historic moment where Twitter has stepped in and said, no, that world leader, the United States president, is too dangerous to use our platform. It is an astonishing thing that technology companies like Twitter and Facebook feel they have to protect the public from the American president. They have to take away his keys because they don't trust him to get behind the wheel. It, it does speak to the power of technology companies. And I think many Trump supporters will hear about this and say, this just proves that Trump is being censored, he's being punished, he's being hurt by Silicon Valley. But censorship is not the right word here, Wolf. This has nothing to do with the First Amendment. Yep. The First Amendment's about your relationship to the government not your relationship with a private technology company. Yep. And these platforms have yeah, been under true. tremendous pressure from liberals, from Trump critics, from a lot of employees at Twitter to take action against this president. Uh, hundreds of Twitter employees signed a letter saying they wanted Trump banned, wow. and now he has been banned. Woo! Banned not just now from Twitter and his 88 million followers, but earlier Zuckerberg banned him from Facebook and Instagram as well. Those are the three biggest social media operations that the president had. Hundreds of millions of individuals potentially were getting his uh, his information here in the U.S., Brian, yes. and around the world. 
We learned something. Yes, Facebook Finally. Uh, ban, uh, basically suspended him indefinitely, but at least for two weeks. So that means through Inauguration Day. On Facebook, he has a chance to come back someday in the future. On Twitter, this is apparently a permanent move by Twitter. Wow. So February, March, whatever, there's no appeal, there's no coming back to Twitter. Not just Twitter and Facebook, we've seen YouTube, we've seen Twitch, we've even seen websites that specialize in shopping, um, Shopify, uh, also uh, took action against the president's campaign. This is a, a YouTube is another one. The list goes on and on. Um, you know, we, we have seen this remarkable action by technology companies because they fear what Trump will do with his platforms. As yep. you know, Brian, a, a lot of people think uh, these, these platforms should have done this a long time ago. Exactly. Even what the president was out there promoting. Uh, what do you think? That's right. Look, think about six months. The president was on Twitter during the unrest across the country. He said, when the, the looting starts, the shooting starts. Crazy. And, and that was the kind of post, so incendiary, that many people said then his account should be suspended. The reality has been Twitter and Facebook has, have been very afraid to go crosswise with this president. They have been afraid to take action against an account. But in any other case, he would be suspended years ago. That's just the reality. But they put in place different policies, different exceptions to the rules in order to avoid this kind of moment, this collision with the American president. There are regulatory concerns. There's concerns that Trump's fans will leave these platforms. And by the way, that's already happening, Wolf. I think we will hear about the president going off to fringe platforms instead. He's going to go off to far right websites that promise they will not block him. And that's where he will communicate instead, but to a much, much smaller audience. Well, Good. It's a really an amazing, amazing situation when you think big picture of what's going on. This is the president of the United States in his final 12 days in office. And all of a sudden, Twitter suspends him personally, accounts suspended. Uh, I want to bring Preet Bharara, our senior legal analyst, the former U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York. Preet, uh, what do you think about this uh, from a legal perspective? Uh, well, with respect to Twitter, something that should be very clear to everyone, and it gets confused a lot, and a lot of folks who are put under sanction by social media platforms make the allegation that they're being censored or it's a violation of their First Amendment rights. It is not. Uh, Twitter is a private company. It has terms and conditions of use. And if you violate those terms and conditions, you can be suspended temporarily or permanently, as they have done now. In fact, President Trump, by virtue of his office, being the commander in chief, has probably gotten away with more violations of the of the Twitter terms than any other human uh, in the country. I know. And only now, uh, given the events of this week and the violence that's resulted in death, is Twitter taking it seriously when it comes to the president of the United States. So he has no cause of action. He has no claim. Probably to some extent, it's helpful to him. Uh, you know, taking him off Twitter uh, <clears throat> precludes the ability of him to make incriminating statements about uh, things that had been litigated in court. I mean, I imagine that if there's impeachment proceedings that one of the things that's gonna be raised is what was in Donald Trump's mind with respect to the insurrection of this past week. And some of that evidence comes from his tweets. Well, very quickly, you know, Preet, the, 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 he's gonna be a private citizen in 12 days, maybe even earlier if he were to resign or be removed uh, according to the 25th Amendment to the Constitution. Preet, but once he's a private citizen, can he go and file lawsuits? Can he complain? Does he have any legal case at all to get back on? I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. I mean, he can, he can be a plaintiff even as the president. What, what cannot happen while he's the president is under DOJ guidelines. He can't be charged with a crime. But other legal proceedings, he's free to make and bring, and he has done so <clears throat> in behalf of his campaign, as we know, dozens of times around the country. He can try to bring an action, um, but I think there's a clear case based on the internal regulations and terms and conditions of Twitter, which they're allowed to enforce as pretty much as they see fit. I don't think he has any claim or cause of action whatsoever. We just got a statement uh, from Joe Manchin, the Democratic senator from West Virginia, thanking Twitter for taking this action. Uh, significant statement indeed. Uh, there you see it right now. Thank you, Twitter, for taking this action. We must come together as a country to heal and find a common path forward. Uh, let me go back to uh, Jim Acosta, our chief White House correspondent. Uh, any reaction at all from the White House, Jim, that we're getting to this really dramatic move the president of the united states suspended from tweeting not yet wolf but i suspect that the reaction will be fierce because this is a president who's been complaining about uh, what he deems to be social media discrimination for some time but let's keep in mind this is a private company 
Uh, it's a publicly traded company, but it is a it is a company that uh, has a platform that he's been using to spread lies and and fear and uh, and hatred over the last four years. You know, he's tweeted everything from calling the press the enemy of the people to uh, hashtag fire Fauci about Dr. Fauci during this coronavirus pandemic. So he's used this Twitter account uh, to great harm. But Wolf. Uh, you don't have a First Amendment right to shout fire in a crowded theater. And that is essentially what the president has been doing over these last four years. And it's what he's been doing leading up to the events on January 6th, uh, the, the attempted violent coup that we saw on January 6th. The president of the United States was inciting people, not just at that rally on the mall on January 6th, he was doing it on social media. Yep. And so you know, this is a social media platform, a hmm. very powerful company, as Brian Stelter was just talking about. Uh, taking stock of the situation and saying, you know, listen, we can't do this forever. One of the things that has been discussed, Wolf, I, leading up to the November 3rd election was whether or not uh, the president could be banned on social media platforms uh, had he won re-election. But now that he's a, a loser, uh, he's, he's leaving office soon, uh, he goes back to being a private citizen, as we've seen time and again on social media platforms. Private citizens can get banned from these platforms left and right uh, if they're not complying with the rules of those social media platforms. And Donald Trump is somebody who has time and again, not just broken the rules of social media, but just so, sort of broken the rules of decent society, spreading hate and fear and lies and so on. And I think a lot of people are going to be applauding this tonight on both sides of the uh, political spectrum. Wolf. You know, it's interesting, Brian Stelter, the president has suspended permanently from Twitter and Twitter saying uh, that they, they did so. Uh, because uh, of, uh, they cited the risk of further incitement of violence, Brian. Uh, further incitement of violence by the President of the United States. How often does Twitter suspend permanently individuals? Because a lot of individuals out there uh, on the far right, let's say, maybe on the far left as well, are permanently inciting violence. This does happen from time to time, uh, largely with people that our viewers have never heard of, uh, random, usually fringe accounts uh, that do get suspended temporarily. And then you get a few warnings, you hit a few strikes, and then you might get permanently banned. But never has a world leader been deplatformed like this. I'm talking about third world countries, dictatorships. We don't see this happen uh, from these platforms. We've got a little more detail from Twitter, Wolf. I'm going to read here. It says, in determining whether to ban Trump's account permanently, Twitter took into account statements that he had made off-platform, meaning they weren't just judging his tweets, they were judging his behavior at the uh, Save America march and, and other statements he's made. Uh, Twitter also saying, we need all social platforms to do this more proactively. Often what is planned in a semi-private space has bearing on the open web. So Twitter is sending a message to other technology companies saying, we all, all of, all of these companies together that have platforms on the internet have to step up their performance and judge content more seriously. By the way, earlier today, Apple said that it may take action against Parler. Parler is that new social network that's been really popular among far right Trump supporters. There's been speculation that Trump would just move over to that site instead. Apple is threatening to remove Parler from its app store because of content moderation concerns. So um, look, it's the fourth year. All of this probably should have happened sooner, but these Here technology are. companies are trying to show some responsibility in the very last days of the Trump administration. It really is incredible. And Preet, uh, you tweet, I tweet, you know, Brian tweets, uh, almost everybody I know tweets nowadays. So give us your perspective on how you anticipate, the president has always been bragging about his 88 million mm. followers on Twitter and how important it is to get his message. He hates the, what he calls the mainstream news media, he calls us the enemy of the American people. He says he's got his own opportunities to convey his messages. He always cites Twitter, but now that has gone away. So give us your perspective. Look, I've interviewed a number of people over the last three years on my podcast, and I often ask a, a simple question. Uh, about social media. And I say, to what extent is Twitter responsible for the rise and for the election of Donald Trump? And many of them were pretty smart folks say, without Twitter, he may not have been elected. Exactly. So uh, the people who are talking about this being an astounding setback for the president, who may choose to run again, by the way, Scary. he becomes a private citizen. But there are some indications that he seeks to become a the leader of the country again. And without the powerful Twitter account that he's accumulated over time, I think it's a big deal. You know, you could ask you can ask the question if if the president says it, but it's not on Twitter. It's, it's like a tree falling in the woods. <clears throat> if there's no one there, does it make a sound? Yeah. And he has amplified 
what is already a powerful platform, meaning the presidency, uh, I think, in a way that has never been done before. And to take that away from him, one might argue, you know, to some degree renders him kind of mute. Yep. So it's a big deal. Well, you know, very quickly before I let you go, Preet, uh, he's, he still is the president of the United States, the most powerful man in the world. That's what we all always call the president of the United States for another 12 days, presumably. He stays in office for 12 days. What do you think he potentially could do in retaliation during these 12 days, executive orders, uh, whatever he wants to do as far as punishing Twitter and Facebook, uh, Instagram, some of these other platforms that have suspended him? Well, he talks, he, <clears throat> he talks incessantly about repealing Section 230. Which he, failed. Is he failed in doing that. He failed in doing that. And by the way, I, I think he has no power to do anything, in part because there's not a lot he can do uh, because of the tools well, at his disposal. And second, I think there is a feeling among people around him, whether it's the Justice Department or the Defense Department, or uh, you name it, the Federal Trade well, Commission, uh, that he doesn't govern anyway. But his influence is so limited based on the events of this week Yep. That I think even if you were to, to try to take some drastic and appropriate baby. action against Twitter or some other social media company, that those orders, I expect, if they're unlawful, would be Dismissed. declined, yes. would be defied. So you know, he, he's got a few days left. He doesn't have a lot of cards uh, in his, <clears throat> in his deck. He doesn't have a lot of people who are prepared to do things given the state of the country that we're, that we're in and given his status as you know, the soon-to-be ex-leader of the country. All right, we're going to continue to monitor. This is a huge breaking news story, a major development. The President of the United States, let me repeat, the President of the United States has now permanently been suspended from Twitter. Uh, he has no longer an opportunity to directly speak to 88 million of his followers on Twitter. Woo! We'll have much more right after this.